Why don't we stand and join on a Sunday morning at hymn number 85, a Savior like a shepherd lead us.
and uh, we love the one that's temporary right here, but we do need it under Shepherd. We need to be praying for that. An update on my wife. Uh, she hasn't uh, changed a whole lot, still dealing with the fevers, not able to sit up much. And uh, we're still waiting for more testing because advanced technology lost the orders, and so we have to go back this week. But anyhow, uh, we'll get to the bottom of this, hopefully. I want my wife back. <laughs> All right, John.
final prayer. Father, we give thanks that you lead us along, and we thank you for your grace and kindness. Thank you for this church, and for those that attend. May we honor you in what we do. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We're looking today at Psalm 1. We're going to do it in two parts. Today, Lord willing, Psalm 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. And next week, 4, 5, and 6. We're <clears throat> looking at a series of messages on living the Christian life. Salvation is very easy. You accept Christ as your Savior. You realize you're a sinner. You call the name of the Lord. You ask Jesus to save you, and you're saved. People have said, when you accept Jesus, all your problems are solved. <laughs> if that is true, how many of this church are saved? <laughs> your problems just begin. So we're looking at how to live the Christian life. And I'll be referring today to these verses here with the first couple words. Blessed is the man, or blessed is the person. Do you want God to bless you? Do you want God to be pleased with what you're doing? If you work for someone, do you want them to be happy with what you're doing? Or if you're self-employed and you do work for others, do you want them to be happy? My son-in-law is a pastor and also does work. He just put roofs on three apartments in the area. To get paid, they have to be happy with what he does. So we want God to bless us. It also means the blessing bestowed by a superior to an inferior. So you have to know someone in order to be blessed. When I graduated from high school, I became a newspaper reporter. My newspaper experience was I made straight A's in typing class in high school. And now I'm a newspaper reporter. The disadvantage is I have a lot of relatives that read the newspaper, especially my uncle Clarence. And if I didn't get it right, he'd say, Sam, that's not how it happened. So I had to make sure I did this. The editor used a cigar. He did not smoke a cigar. I've never seen a person like this. He had a cigar in his mouth. When he was irritated, the cigar would turn. <laughs> so we would write our article and watch the cigar. <laughs> At first, oftentimes, he would retype my opening paragraph. So the secret in newspaper reporting, you have to get their attention in paragraph one. If, if you don't read paragraph one, they won't read it. So one and the line, the last one. So I learned when I would type something, and then I would see how he retyped it. I began to think like he thought. So as I'm typing, let's see, Henry is going to look at this and say thus and so. And as time went on, the cigar rolled less, <laughs> which means I was pleasing the editor. Now as Christians, don't we want to please the Lord? Don't we want to do things? At the end of life, to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, rather than say, well, you should have messed that up. <laughs> and so we want to see today God's favor. Psalm 32 says, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered, to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. How is that true? We can accept the Christ. And our sins are washed in the blood of Jesus. So we look at Psalm 1. What's the first thing to do if we want to please the Lord? Reject the world's system. Blessed is the man who gives a lot of money. Doesn't say that. Blessed is the man who is on great missionary trip. Doesn't say that. The first way to be blessed of the Lord that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. The first way to please God is reject the world. 
system. And I think right now in America, we're seeing exactly what that's about. For years, decades, we've been concerned about our children going away to college. They grew up in a church. They grew up in Sunday school. They grew up in VBS. After one semester at the university, they don't believe anything. So we've been concerned, what are they teaching our kids in school that undermines the faith? The issue right now is public schools. What happened last fall in Europe when we had the COVID, they shut down the schools. <clears throat> what happened? It was remote at home. And the parents began to watch. What are they teaching our children? They're going to do what? And so the parents are beginning to wise up. What's going on in our school systems? A year ago right now, there was a major battle brewing in Montgomery County. Because remember, Larry Hogan made the rules about COVID, and then he would say each county makes its own decision. So the Montgomery County School Board and County Council said, we're going to keep school shut this fall. That was a year ago. The private schools said, no, we're going to open. All last year, summer, private schools were preparing. Social distancing, mask. They did all the things that were necessary to meet the standard. And the county said, you can't open. The problem the school board faces is this. In Montgomery County, the parents, many of them, are high paid lawyers in Washington, D.C. Not a bunch of hicks like we have in Fermi County. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say Carol. Yet. And so what happened, the governor came down on the side of the private schools, which makes it more popular. And it finally backed off. Right now, the major issue in Loudoun County, Virginia, are you, are you following what's going on in Loudoun County, Virginia, where they are teaching our children down to kindergarten? You can't decide whether you're a man or a woman to get older. Hello? They're teaching things that are wrong. They had a recent school board meeting. So many people showed up. They terminated the meeting and asked the people to leave. But the people wanted to stay and discuss what's going on. And some of them got arrested. Not a good idea. Because one of them goes to a prominent fundamental church with some good lawyers. So we're seeing right now the world educating our system contrary to the word of God. <clears throat> I want you to see the three verbs. Walk, stand, sit. You see the progression? You walk long, then you stand, then you sit. Do we want to know what our young people are associated with? Who are your friends? Who are you going to stay with? What are their parents like? We want to find out what our children are associated with. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, evil company corrupts good morals. And so we want to know where kids, who they're associated with. And what are they doing? What kind of life do they live? Now, I didn't have that problem to run up. I was a farm boy. My associates were cows and horses, dogs, chickens, and so forth. But when we went to the city school, things changed a little bit. So we want to make sure we're following godly people. <clears throat> I knew in the sermon this was going to happen, so I'll do it now and then explain. I've had some voice problems over the years. In 1998, 
that cancer of the right vocal cord. 28 treatments. The only tattoos I have are medical tattoos right here. Couldn't speak for four months. During that four months time, the way the kid would make my wife is, which I still do. <laughs> I'm going to ask her to explain what happened recently when I did this. Yes, because my voice is going and you like to tell the story. He whistles, it's just a habit, he whistles for me. Uh, we were at Coles the other day, and he was, I was checking out, and he was standing beside a man coming at the door, and whistled for me, and I went just the same time the lady walked by. <laughs> 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 what did I do? <laughs> and we got to talk to her, found out she's a Christian, and all this money. This is just a habit. <laughs> She said, I can't wait. I'm going home and tell my, my, my husband I was in Coles and a mess with Whistler. <laughs> so uh, we have that. We have that plan. So here we have walk, stand, sit. And as a Christian, I have to guard myself that I don't have the philosophy of the world. Because the philosophy of the world is not the same as the philosophy of God. So you're walking the council. What the world wants to do. When I was a senior in high school, I began to realize that I was never going to keep up with the, with the game. I don't know when you're in school, but Monday morning was boys bragging session. What they did on weekend senior high school. They had a car and they had girls and they had party. I had Youth for Christ on Saturday. Sunday school, morning service, evening service. Well, I'm going in a different direction. So I wasn't trying to keep up with them. So we don't want to follow the leading of the world. Now it says, stand. Stand around. You think of gangs. Well, I went to Lewistown Elementary School. About 30 kids. Lewistown just south of Thurmont. Most of us country kids. Uh, farming and so forth. Then we went to the big city school where there's 300 in the class, a lot of city kids. And our principal warned us, their way of life may be different than your way of life. And one of the guys in seventh grade, he was called a juvenile delinquent, known for stealing bicycles and skipped class and stole one right in front of us. None of us followed that. We were horrified. We're not going to go with that crowd. When I went to a, a city church, one of the kids there always kept getting us in trouble. But it didn't stop there. The day that I went to Washington Bible College, he went to the Maryland Penitentiary. It's a lot different Bible College than Penitentiary. So I'm not going to stand, I'm not going to go that way, because I don't like that destination. Then it says, don't abide, don't sit. Don't go along with what they're teaching. And so, I don't know how many of you know Dr. David Jeremiah. I didn't hear it, but I read about it on the internet. Last week he gave a message. It is time for you to get your children out of public education and get them trained in Christian schools. And so, when the world is getting worse, and it infiltrates us, so we're not going to satisfy the world. Other verses, and I don't have time today to go at it, but it says, Love not the world, be the things in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, pride of life, is not of the Father, it's of the world. And the world passes away the lust their own. He does those little go to minds forever. There'll be a sermon somewhere in there if my voice holds up and you put up with me. I was thinking this morning, what advantage you folks have? You never heard me preach before 1998. The reason why I say that my daughter showed a video of me before that, and everybody said, 
Back to 40 sounds different. Radiation will do that to you. But at least we have a voice to say some things. So we don't want to go along with the world. But verse 2 gives us something else. But, well, not the world, someone said. It's important. That's the negative. Reject the world system. But second, rejoice in God's scriptures. If the only thing we are is about is against something, what are we for? You don't walk into God, counsel of ungodly. You don't stand on the way of sinners. You don't sit and see the scuffle. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he meditates day and night. The way I survive in this world is not watch all news. I'm not a news hall. I don't say on news all the time. Oftentimes the light will verify this after we watch. Tucker and Hannity and Laura. I put on music before I go to bed. He had a different view of the whole thing. So for a believer, while all this is going on, it says our delight, it's pleasing, it's precious. Is Bible more than a middle name? Do we enjoy reading the Bible? My wife has an aunt. We get along great. She's nine months younger than Jackie. But she goes to liberal churches over the time. Her father-in-law was pastor of a liberal church. But more recently, she's going to a Bible church. <coughs> we talked to her recently. And apparently, they're encouraging to read the Bible. And they hear Jackie's aunt say, I really enjoy reading through the Bible. Starting in Genesis, she's got to the book of Acts. To hear her say how much she enjoys reading the Bible. I trust <coughs> that we enjoy reading the Bible. Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you desires in your heart. I really enjoy reading the Bible. I will admit, Jack and I had a slight problem this year reading through the Bible. During the book of Job, we both got COVID, and I ran in the car and decided the house. I said, listen, we got to get out of the book of Job. <laughs> <laughs> no fall on Job. <laughs> but to read the Bible and to be excited about what the Bible really says, Delight yourself in the Word, and in His law does He meditate day and night. Meditate means to think over, mull over in your mind. Talk to yourself. The Word is muse, M-U-S-E. What's the opposite of M-U-S-E? A-M-U-S-E. And what's happening in America? We're being amused because we don't use. You ever tell someone, someone does something and say, what were you thinking? The answer is, they weren't. So we want to think over what is the Bible saying? What does God want us to do about these things? <clears throat> and then number three, rely on God's strength. I hate to keep giving you illustrations of that. <laughs> Rely on God's strength. He should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in season. His leaf all shows not a wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Permanence. I heard Hank's family say, Hank's got to plant something that grows. A farmer just does that. So in our home, we plant tomatoes, because I like tomatoes. Beans, like beans. Collars, because my wife likes collars, and I'll go on with that. But I've also planted three maple trees. Now, is there a difference between planting a maple tree and planting a tomato plant? Well, yeah, I haven't eaten anything off of the maple trees yet. I have had my first tomato off the tomato plant. The difference is, there's going to come a time, October, going to be a frost. 
Tomatoes won't survive. Maple trees will. I'm going to basically give a shade to the house. But a tree is more permanent than a tomato. These trees now are four years old and they've survived all the winters, all the snows, all the storms. The tomatoes, I've got to stake them up and hold them and keep them tender. And the tree is there permanent. So I, it says here, uh, he's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I love that thought, planted by the rivers of water. To drive through the countryside, you see the trees along the Monocacy River. And if you're flying on an airplane overhead, you can look down, you can see where the rivers are because of the trees. And you get further west, you can tell the rivers and the trees. Because that's where you get moisture. So I call that permanence. But I'm looking at it in two ways. The productivity is in two ways. A tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in season. I call that normal. Normal Christian living. I mean daily Christian living. Sunday after Sunday. And you enjoy being in church. Jesus said in John 15, 8, If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. So we live the normal Christian life, not dramatic. Um, you just live as the Lord would have you live. But then it goes on to say, His leaf also shall not wither. I call that difficult. Thank the Lord, when I was growing up, I lived in a church, basically farmers, and I think I mentioned the illustration. One of the farmers, his barn burned down and his wife died. Now, for a farmer, that's a pretty good joke. But he never lost faith, never turned his back on the Lord. Difficult times may come. Difficult times may come to any church. A church that survives for a long period of time could have struggles. All of us have struggles. All of us have good days and bad days. Things don't go right. This accident, this little fender bender knife or front bender, it did not damage the step. But the car didn't survive quite as well. And I'm taking it back the third time to get a leak fixed. Each time, I'm more distraught than I was before and say, Lord, what's going on? And you know, I'll not do this. So, <clears throat> all of us have struggles. All of us have problems. Hopefully, not all of us had a bad week, same week. But things don't always go well. But we don't walk away from the Lord. When a drought comes, that tree's got roots way down. And it will survive. Proverbs 24.10 if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. One of the things that I always enjoy about a county fair, if I can get to it, I enjoy a tractor pull and a horse pull. Um, when we went to Calvary County Fair, well, I was passing down there, they really had a lot of horses and teams back in the 60s. And so I wanted to watch the guys in Calvert County, and they pulled this sled, and it was going to go until it stops. That's the purpose of it. And so I watched, and there were big horses, big horses. And this guy came in, I think he allowed to have three horses. He had three relatively medium-sized horses, but not, not, not strong, not big. And I always felt sorry for the guy. And when you put that click in the, ch in the chain, apparently that's the goats. When that guy took off, those horses pulled together. They pulled more than anyone else there. You know why? They pulled together. Because I watched those big horses. One goes ahead, other. And like, this is not going forward. This guy had those horses trained together. And he won the kind. Smaller horses won. Why? They pull together in adversity. So may the Lord help us to pull together. Isaiah 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount with wings of eagles. They shall not be weary and walk and not faint. And finally, whatever he does shall prosper. When I think of my dad, I think of a prosperous farmer. Not big crops. Not a lot of money. But a man who walked with the Lord. Every year I hear dad say, well, I planted the corn, but God's going to make it grow. And then we're going to rain this time. How many years he called that a million dollar rain? I guess probably didn't want us. And so, prosper doesn't mean dollar bills. It means a heart that's right with the Lord. It means that to, to follow what God would have us do. Joshua 1 talks about it. This book of law will not depart out of your mouth. If you meditate there and there, day and night, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Next week, we look at verse 4. Context changes totally different. So I trust all of us have said no to the world, yes to scriptures, and rely on God's strength. That's our prayer. Father, we give thanks for your grace and kindness. Help us to do your will. We pray Christ's name.
Heavenly <laughs> Father, we always need to work on our timing. And you have it just perfectly right. And we ask, Lord, that you would help us to just rest in your spirit and be patient and understand that you have given us deep roots in refreshing springs. And they well up at the right time to give us the nourishment we need. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we would be those pleasant trees in a world that is not pleasant, that's not looking forward to you, that we can provide the, the shade of God's Word and give rest and nourishment and encouragement. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless us, not because we were such worthy specimens, but because we are so needy. And without you, we can do nothing. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.